I'm Scott Goldman, and this is the Grammy Museum's Programs in Home. Our guests today are a singer-songwriter and her co-writer, collaborator, producer, who just happens to be her brother. Together, they make genre-blurring, compelling, and wildly popular music. Their work spawned the biggest North American debut by any artist in the last decade, which resulted in a sweep of the major categories at the 2020 Grammy Awards. They're here today following the release earlier this year of the song they wrote for the new James Bond film, as well as more recent releases, My Future and What They'll Say About Us. Billie Eilish and Phineas, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having us. How are you, Scott? I'm doing, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, you know, I seem to start all of these conversations these days talking about quarantine um, because everybody experiences it a little bit differently. And, and Billy, I know you've been, you've, you've talked a little bit about kind of social isolation and, and, and how that the effect it's having on you. How are you doing these days? You know, same old. It's a, uh, it's uh, it's quite um, a groundhog day feeling, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to, we're, we're, we're finding ways to make the, routine of it more fun and keeping it safe and like you know trying to be grateful for everything it's it's at this point it's a little much because I'm, I'm <laughs> definitely ready I've been ready for a while to get my life back but um I also care about my safety and the people around me safety so I don't know we're we'll, we'll see what happens but right now we're just um making music and you know swimming in our pools I've joked that like if the quarantine were only eight weeks long it would have been like perfect yeah like if it were if it were eight weeks start to finish we're like wow everything's shut down just chill out read some books watch some tv shows and then it was like all right everything's fine again we all would have been like that was such a nice little reset and yeah, instead, literally. <laughs> instead yeah. it's like that was you know by the end of that eight weeks no, like we the like, first two weeks i was like this is so amazing <laughs> this kind we'll of have two weeks <laughs> off it's nice we'll go right back out on tour everything will be back to normal. We'll just have had like a nice two week gap and like rest and then, <laughs> oh, that was wrong. Not so, not so, not so much. Um, hey, Phineas, you know, I, I, I read that you had recently produced a track via Zoom with Ben Platt. And I'm, True. I'm wondering what, what, what's that experience like working remotely? Well, for me, I mean, uh, you know, it pre presents different challenges than working um, with somebody. But in the case of like producing uh, specifically the Ben Platt song, I was sent like a, a guide track piano and then his lead vocal. Um, and then kind of told like, would you be willing to build a production around this? And um, it was, uh, you know, in, in many ways, really fun for me. Um, the, the style of music that he makes sort of lends itself to like, I play a little bit of everything. So I got to play like acoustic guitar and electric bass and electric guitar and piano and drums and uh, organs. And, you know, I got to really be like a one man. I was like Dick Van Dyke from Mary Poppins. And, uh, you know, like that's the way my home is set up. And then it was basically just notes, you know, it was like, how do you feel about this? And him giving feedback and, and, and going back and forth. Um, it's much harder I've found to actually write a song on a Zoom call because so much of like a writing session is like sitting there playing the chord progression and the other person singing over it. And the lag on zoom just makes it like virtually impossible. So you end up having to do like, you'd have to like record a loop of it, send it to the person as a voice memo, and then they play it on their phone and they sing to it. And you kind of sit over in your other thing on mute. And then you go like, that sounds great. Like it's much more challenging. So I feel very lucky that we're working together in person yeah. still. Billy, have you done any of this remote stuff? Any, any, you know, remotely collaborating or, or even, you know, live stream sort of stuff? It's really, no, I haven't. I, I, I've done like, you know, a few live stream performances or, you know, I did like one at the north towards the beginning of quarantine, but no, nah, the, the, the virtual working sounds like pure hell to me. So, <laughs> um, also, uh, it's just I am I'm so so grateful that we're so close that we've been quarantining since the beginning together like 
we obviously like Phineas lives here with his girlfriend Claudia and then sometimes I'm with like my parents at their house but it's what's what's great is like it's just so nice to have a family a family that's you know you can actually see and we lucked you know? out but because because uh, i'm not seeing nobody else <laughs> uh, yeah so i haven't i haven't hugged my best friends in uh what is it like six months now yeah seven months so that's great but yeah i know I'm, it's i'm spending more time with the jackrabbits and the coyotes out here than i am <laughs> yeah other other people so. Do to that point scott yeah. Dogs. This is gonna in the in a diary of a dog's life. This is the the most amazing like <laughs> year and a half of all time for them. Yeah. Like <laughs> they, like my dog is gonna be devastated when I get to like go back on tour again and leave the house again. My dog is like, this is the greatest year and a half of my whole life. <laughs> like I can't even believe how much I get to see this person. Yeah, like she's so spoiled. Yeah, I, I love that. Hey, let me let me go back a little bit to um, everything I wanted. Because at least in, in my mind, a lot of things that we're gonna talk about seem to have, seem to have begun there. I could be right or wrong about that. But, um, and, 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 and I know that there's, um, there's a significant backstory to this song um, and, and a difficult backstory at that. Um, but but I, I wanna get to that point where you came back to revisit it. Uh, and if I understand correctly, you found it on somebody's phone? Yeah. Well, it's actually interesting that you asked that because it's, it's such a fun thing to think about, like, how you made a song after, you know, it's been out for ages. It's, like, fun to re relive it. But, um, yeah, we, we wrote the first verse. Uh, verse. About it. And that was it in... September of 2018 18. yeah and that was that it was it was only the verse then we got into an entire family argument and then we didn't get back to it for until April of 2019 and then that's when we wrote I think like the bridge it was like very random we wrote we wrote it all out of order but, the production was pretty much there yeah. when we first made we it first though. we we the, did we yeah. made, we wrote the beginning with the production the but the piano, what so. was nice or what was interesting is like we would it's so funny think back thinking back on this because we would like I would we just go through our voice memos all the time just to see if we like find any you know random things we recorded we don't remember and i kept finding this one i was like what the hell is this and we we do you remember we'd always like play it and be like i had a dream and we every time we'd hear it we'd just go like oh my god we have to we have to make that song we sang that one line like with a guitar like in a green room to justin the uh, head of dark room billy's label yeah. and he was like <laughs> he, kept he was like it. that line is amazing yeah. and we were like that's only a lot like we don't like he was like i can't wait to hear that song and we were like we, we have to write he would song. he would be like he would be like guys 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 you gotta work on i had a dream <laughs> he'd say it like once a week and we'd be like okay but it he was, was very, it was uh, encouraging we were always talking about we have to finish that song nightmare or whatever it's called and um we eventually did but it, it was interesting because we did write it in a in a period of time when i was you know not not mentally very uh, stable and we finished it in a period of, of time when I was, and it was like interesting to write from both perspectives it's and, true. and like you just, re just remember how everything felt and be more uh, conscious of, of change and like current, you know, I don't know. Yeah, well, one, one of the things, I mean, it, it went from something that, that was very dark to some to a song about stability and friendship um yeah. I'm, I'm wondering for you billy whether whether you happen to see that as a kind of a marker for you as a songwriter hmm good one sure it is uh i mean it's it's i feel like we're always and you know phineas has been writing for longer than i have and is better and older but I am older. I won't fight the older I, thing, but I'll, I'll fight everything else. I, I, I have been noticing, and especially then, like, there's just, like, constantly new things that I'm, that I feel like are, 
are almost like breakthroughs of of me and and songwriting because I for a long time I really was really insecure with the way that I wrote and I like didn't I just didn't feel very good at it and Phineas has always been really good at it we've talked about this a ton which is like growing up with him made me feel like I couldn't write it at all not because he made me feel that way because he was just so good that I naturally felt that way which I've talked about loads of times but yeah over time and, and definitely then there's just like new things that I, I, I come across that like open a new door to like songwriting for me. And that was, yeah, that was definitely one of them writing yeah. from a perspective of, of a completely different mind state, a uh, state of mind from different points of your life is really, it's hard and it's like interesting and you learn a lot about yourself. So yeah. I would, I would also say just as like an observer to Billy as an artist and as a creative um, not to like spoil anything, but in in working on the next body of work that we've been working on every day, like Billy's self confidence in her writing has grown oh, so exponentially. Tons. Just from like from everything I wanted onward, like my future, which was the most recent song we put out, and the first song other than the James Bond song uh, after everything I wanted, like a night and day sort of. Uh, approach from Billy in terms of her confidence in her own writing. Like the amount that she brought to the table on day one of my future was like Billy kind of like, like a lot of the time we'll come into a room and we'll both have nothing and something will get made. <laughs> yeah. And in that case, Billy came into the room, like, look at all this stuff I have. She had like the chords mapped out. She had the hook idea. She had the first line. And you're just like, wow. That's well, I, I remember we were all like in the living room and I was just playing piano and Phineas was talking to like your Claudia or something. Dad or probably. Yeah. And I was like, I just was like, I'm in love with my future. And you were like, Billy, Billy, Billy. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> my favorite thing is when Phineas goes, what is that? Uh, Cause then you go like, well, because my, my not, to, I wrote it. not to like throw Billy under the bus, but sometimes I'm like, did you write that? And she's like, no, it's, 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 you know, Leslie Gore or something. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, fine. But when it's, when it's a Billy composition, I'm so excited. Yeah. But you, you guys, you guys are doing my work for me. And it, because the <laughs> next thing I wanted to talk about was my future. And, and my, my perspective on that is um, it, 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 it it seems like there is, and don't take this the wrong way, <laughs> there is purity in the songwriting. For sure. That, that had not been existing previously with you. Um, um, and and I'm, I'm wondering kind of where, where that came from. Did it just happen or, or had you been working on? This that, is something know, that, this has been so interesting to watch because, and, and with my future, but also like the new, new the stuff. entire catalog of new stuff that we've been working on, there's an insane shift in just like mature, like growth. And it's not on purpose. It's just like, just live like being a little it's older and like growing living up life. a little like it's it's really been interesting because i listen back to even you know when we all fall asleep i listen back and i'm like my voice sounds so different then and it's like you forget that you know for the our first ep that we made when you know don't smile at me i was 14 when we made most of it and then 15 when it came out you know so i was recording those songs at 14 you know that's a 14 year old's voice that's that's a that's a different voice than at my age now and obviously I'm still young so it's going to change even more but it's been really really interesting and and the way that that I write is different the way that you were like we just it's just growing in this way that that feels so organic and real and I was thinking about how you know there's been so many times when people are like you know she has such a like for certain songs back in the day, they may be like, her voice is so like soft and it's like a baby voice. I'm like, yeah, cause I was a baby. <laughs> like now I'm not like, it's, I'm, I'm really curious to see the reaction to some of the newer stuff. Not, it doesn't, it's not like completely different person. It's just, it's just grown up. It's just, it's, yeah. it's, it's like you look back at the other projects, maybe not as much when we all fall asleep because we worked on that for so long, that it's a little bit less, obvious but it is like looking at like baby photos it's like you look at it and you're like oh what a what a cute little kid like dude and i don't think i don't think you're like 
you're not like um looking at it negatively you're not like oh my god no, what, a, it's what an so, ugly child just you're just so, like wow so i was different. so young it's so interesting to just like th you don't think about your voice changing because when you're any age you are you have the voice that you have and you're like this is my voice you're, you're not thinking it's gonna be different in a few years da, da, da. i mean as billy's it's really interesting like collaborator like you know it has it was especially when she was very young now you know even at 18 which is young in terms of your your life you, you're you're at least like a legal adult you know when we started writing where she was 14 13 thir 13 14 i had such an awareness of because i was 18 at the time i had such an awareness of like how much i didn't identify as an 18 year old with myself at 14 and so i had such a desire to like try to make some stuff that that she wouldn't be mortified by yeah. in the you know, five we years mostly later. accomplished we, that. Like seventy five percent. There's twenty five percent of the stuff that we're like, no. <laughs> but but Listen, some stuff we're like we feel good about it. Just like there are baby photos you go back to and it's like Absolutely. oh man, that's what was that haircut? Why am I looking who, who put me in those parachute pants? Yeah. Here's the other here's the other thing about about my future. The lyrical content. Um you know it it, it seems that the song is speaking to uh, a, a sense of being more self-reliant. Um, yeah, definitely. And t tell me, tell me about kind of coming to that for yourself, Billy. Well, to be honest with you, if I'm, I, I realized this pretty recently that that the initial um, idea that I had for the general idea of the song was and i didn't even i this was subconscious i didn't even realize this till after we wrote the song but i found this video you know it was like one of my snapchat memories was like four years ago today and it was this video of me in my room at i guess 14 and i was listening to just haven't met you yet by michael buble and i used to listen to that when i was younger and just fill with excitement and joy about like what is to come and I loved the idea about you know the people I haven't met the person I haven't fallen in love with yet and I watched that video and I was like it's kind of it's kind of touching and sad at the same time watching your younger self like listen to that song also because I hadn't met a lot of the people that I've met now or that have been a, a, a really rough part of my life. So it's really interesting to like watch yourself be like, just, I don't know. And, and I sent it to my friend and she was like, and I was like, wow, this is so ridiculous. Cause I, I did meet some of those people and it didn't turn out so great. And then she was like, no, 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 I don't see it that way. When I watch that video, I go like, it, it feels like you're excited to meet your future self. Like just haven't met you yet. I love the idea of watching like 14 year old Billy just to fill with like joy and excitement about her future self. I just haven't met you yet. And then that was completely subconsciously in my brain for like months. And yeah. I wrote that chorus and I was just like, this is exactly what I'm feeling. And, you know, the rest of the song that's like clearly spoken to another person is also just so real and needed to be said. And um, I don't know, I, 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 we were really, really, that was very satisfying. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, it, go for it, Scott. The, 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 the other thing that I read was it came together very quickly. Yeah. It was like yeah. Two days and done. Yeah. It was the writing was much faster than the recording process. We wrote it. Um, we wrote it in I think two, two days. days, and then probably recorded over the course of like a week and a half. Yeah, but what was interesting was, yeah, we we wrote it for like two days, fully written. We recorded it, everything, but we there was this one day i think we've talked about this there was like one day before you know that that second half production was in and it was still just piano in my voice and we were just sitting in here like where does it go where does this go where can we take this and i was gonna go home i literally was like well i guess that's it i guess we have nothing for today we were halfway we, through the day we'd already done like a bunch of harmonies yeah, or something we'd done what we thought was like okay well this is enough for one day and for in our standards which is like <laughs> one one whatever but took a dip in the pool <laughs> a trip to the spa no i'm just that's <laughs> high school musical but yeah we just like hung out outside my mom came over we just 
you know, just had a regular, didn't think about music, whatever. And we came back in here. I don't even know why, but I was going to leave. It was like, we were going to be done. And Phineas just started doing these, like, these, he just like did Nile this, Rogers like, little, guitar, like, this little, like, ching, chicka, chicka, ching, chicka, ching. and we were just like, and we just kept going and it just immediately it was just like there it is here it is like came to us i don't know it was very satisfying and, it was really fun and yeah yeah no it was like one of those cases where i think you i've fallen more and more and more in love over the years of like how production can revitalize a song halfway through like i think i think partially because of my own tendency to like listen to a song up until the payoff and then be like cool i got my nutrients out of that song like i don't need to hear the chorus a third time but it's like if each chorus that is like essentially the same lyrics and melody if each chorus is offering me as a listener something super different yeah i'm so much more likely to stick it out and listen to the whole song i i wish that weren't like a tendency of mine like i also love putting on a like a uh you know rosemary clooney vinyl and listening to the whole thing but there's a tendency in the car to put on wop and listen to like half of it and then be like that's enough wop for me today yeah, but it fills your it fills you it yeah fills the your... tank is full yeah i have to pee i'll be right back he has to pee i'll be right but it'll be so right, well, short we'll, 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 we'll stick with billy billy i i have to ask you about you're doing this really cool thing with spotify this letter to your future self yeah Tell me about that. Um, yeah, that was the cutest little idea they had. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know that that. As soon as I heard that idea, I was like, "Ooh, that's cute." <laughs> um, I just think that's such a, you know, we need that. I mean, I'm such a, a um, a sucker for a, for a letter to yourself. I don't know. I, I've always, you know, written down. A bunch of stuff I, I i've throughout the last few years every like couple months i'll just like take a video of myself and it's like 10 minutes long and i just am telling myself all these things that are happening in my life the way i feel the things going on around me just random like n not even important things and i always say you know at the end i'm just like all right billy i'll see you see you soon mm -hmm. and it's it's a fun thing that i've always done and i think that I just think we're we're who we all need. You know, we're the the people that are gonna get us into a better place, push us into a worse place. Like it's just we're our own worst enemy, and we're also our, you know, like best friend. So I think it's really important that we all have relationships with ourselves and excitement for the future and our future selves. And um, yeah, I thought that idea was just like so oh. cute. Well, I mean, especially now when, you know, yeah. rightly or wrongly, optimism is in, is in you know, Short scary. Supply. Yeah. So, so, so doing that, you know, for, for your audience is, is remarkable. Have, do you have any sense of, of kind of what the pickup has been on this and how people are participating? I don't really. I, I know that they've been writing lots of notes, um, but I kind of stopped looking yeah because i yeah got a little too much for me but um i don't know i i've heard from a couple of people that it's it's just been like fun and and sweet and made them feel good and hopefully it feels good in a few years and i just love the idea that you can that it'll send you the note in a few years like you pick the date and it it goes okay well see you in a couple of years and then when that date comes you get a little email from yourself yeah see you then it's super cool. Um, um, so, uh, Phineas, I, 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 you know, I don't want to leave you out of this discussion. Uh, you just, you just released or recently, uh, what yeah. does about us? Um, again, you know, they, they, there's something both about my future and and what they'll say about us in terms of, you know, optimism in the face of everything we're facing these days. Um, uh, tell tell me about the song and and why you put it out now. Well, I think to um, the the bridge between the two songs is probably that they were both written um, during this period of time, so they both have a kind of an awareness of it, which I felt as a songwriter. I don't know if Billy agrees or disagrees, but like 
there were some songs I, I have great affection for that I was working on before quarantine that now have like so much less resonance. Don't that, make sense. And I like, I feel like I like this song a lot, but it may not make sense until a year and a half from now again. Mm -hmm. And so I sort of started over. I just started writing new songs, which is kind of what we did too. And um, I wrote What They'll Say About Us in June. I'd been um, going to protests that week with my girlfriend and with Billy. And that had been a super galvanizing, like optimistic experience. Like when you go to a protest and you're like, oh my God, there's so many people that feel the same way I do. And it's uplifting. It's uplifting. And you feel like you're part of a good cause. And, um, and then I was coming home every day and like following um, this woman, Amanda Klutz, whose husband, Nick Cordero was in the hospital. He was in the ICU for, I think 95 days. And he, uh, he'd had just like quite a journey with COVID. He was, you know, uh, put in a medically induced coma uh, so that he could be on a ventilator. He was on the ventilator for like 90 days. He was taken off. The, he was uh, woken up from his sedation, but didn't come out of a coma for like a month. He had to have his leg amputated because of blood clotting. And I think it was the juxtaposition of like thinking about like the whole world kind of having like a revolution outside. And if you were the person whose loved one was sitting there in a hospital bed, dying that like what that would feel like to you where you're like there's like all this hope in the air and you still are dealing with this like tragedy so it was those two ingredients that led to that song kind of in duality and um that was the that was the impetus for it was this kind of like there really is an opportunity during this to make the world better than it was when we got into this well, mess well also it's it's kind of impossible to hear about that situation and not think about amanda's point of view and yeah her like just what she's going through going through and they have a new baby and and yeah they had a one-year-old um and uh i i wrote a lot of it in june and then it kind of had no ending and then he nick ended up passing away in july and it was a song that I'd, i hadn't forgotten about it but i it didn't it didn't end where i i wanted it to end and i had a feeling of like i don't know maybe this maybe no one will ever hear this and i think when he passed away i had a feeling of like i have to finish this song and it has to come out um but i i felt really nervous putting it out um because I, I just didn't want Amanda to hate it. <laughs> um, yeah. I feel like normally we're not trying to cater to like one specific person in our songwriting, but it, it was a little bit like if you made a film about a person who was, a, you know, who was real, like you, you really care what they think. So, yeah. um, and I also didn't want her to feel like I was using it using it as some opportunity for like publicity so i i ended up writing her a letter a couple weeks before it came out or maybe like 10 days that was that kind of expressed all those things of like i i don't even think you should feel like you need to listen to this song if that seems painful for you i don't ever want you to feel like you have to post about it ever you don't even have to reply to me but i needed to let you know that i wrote this about you um because that's just the truth um so yeah, that, that's the story behind it, but it's been very gratifying to see people. It's only been out right now talking to you. So I've been out for two days, um, but to see people kind of juxtapose themselves into the song and, and talk about their own situation. So many people have grandparents who've died from coronavirus or friends, parents who've died. It's just wildly heartbreaking. So it's been a, a, a wonderful experience to see people embrace the song. You know, one of, one of the things that, that, that I'm interested in about, about you and the way you work, um, you know, obviously, and believe it or not, I'm talking to half of the people you've produced lately. <laughs> um, yesterday was Selena Gomez. In a couple of weeks, it's Ash. A month ago, it was J.P. Sachs. Um, but, you know, oftentimes, and I don't have to tell you this, the, the producer is the objective voice in the room. <laughs> he has to provide feedback, good, bad, right. or otherwise. Yeah. How do you do that for yourself? And is it harder? I think it's, I think it's way harder. I think, um, I think one of the immense privileges that I have uh, been given as a producer is I work with a bunch of artists that I already think are great. You know, I'm not, uh, I've never been particularly interested in like being a mean producer. You know, we all hear like famous stories like that 
that sort of era of rock and roll producers that were like throwing stuff at band members and like that's just not i want to i want to create a really loving environment that's just about how how good we can make a song the the harshest i'll ever be is i i care a lot about vocals so i'll i'll, I'll make a person get a great vocal that's about it but you know i don't ever do it in a mean way i just won't let them finish until it's done um but uh you know yeah as as a solo artist it's super hard because you have to go like is this good would i listen to this you know if i uh <laughs> if weren't me <laughs> does it have value it's way harder to be objective i think if it's your own thing it's like it's like having a kid right you don't know if the kid is like nice or charismatic or funny or pretty like you just <laughs> you're like this is i love them regardless they're the they could be the worst how much hey billy how much does he push you but like, i'm pushing like doing I'm I'm the one pushing myself in that situation. That's totally true. Um, and he, with Billy, it's different. Billy, it's definitely a completely different world yeah. with us than than I think with anyone know, else. Anyone else? Yeah. So, Billy is a Billy is like a never-ending, <laughs> like just she'll she'll do fifty takes of like one line, and we'll choose the best syllables from each line and comp that together. And then the next day she'll come over again and she'll be like, I want to redo the whole thing. Yeah. It's intense, but it's because she knows her voice. It's rough. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about the Bond song. Um, Please. Um, you know, this is, uh, you got, I know you guys kind of went through the list of the artists that have done Bond title songs. Um, so, so tell me how you got invited. <laughs> oh my god um honestly i don't even we since i can even remember have been like wouldn't it be sick wouldn't it be sick if we could make a bond song and not like in a like we're gonna make a bond song way just like Fantasy. how cool would that actually be like and i remember i remember for no reason just just for fun we would uh, there's like there must be like multiple tracks that we have somewhere in logic that are just called like Billy Bond, Bond idea. Like before any of this was talked about and um, yeah, we like wrote certain like, it's because there's like a cadence, there's a chord structure that feels very Bondy um, Bond esque, so to speak. And I think when you hear a, when you hear that cadence, your brain just tells it to you. You're just like, sorry, Billy hasn't slept in days. She's really tired. Um, we, uh, but there's this real like feeling of like, oh, that's a bond idea. And, um, so true. I think, uh, I think that's, it's always been on our list of dreams. So when we found out there was an, another one being made and, you know, we just kind of, uh, we, we sort of told our team that we'd be thrilled to put in the work <laughs> of, of yeah. meeting anybody. Well, well, and when, and before we bring someone very special in, um, so, I mean, this is, it's, it's obviously, it's an iconic franchise. The, the other title songs are, are well known. How on earth do you approach it to make it yours? Such a good question. I think, I think as a producer, I didn't want, I wasn't super interested in trying to do something that wasn't Billy. I think to me, it was like, what's, what's the Billy take on a James Bond song? Um, I didn't, you know, I wasn't trying to make her yell. And I would also say, like, I think we've grown so much in in our own, like, we've we've learned so much more about ourselves and, like, what we are as a whole. And I would say that I'm, I'm so much more aware of, like, what actually feels disingenuous versus what actually feels authentic. And... It's really interesting because, you know, at, at the beginning, you obviously this is how life works with growing up, with making art, with anything. When you start off, you're going to be a little bit, um, what's the word? You're going to you're going to copy certain things because derivative, you, derivative, not copy, but like because you can't, by you can't be anything if you if you don't know anything so it, everything it's the way you grow up when you're you know 12 you you start hanging out with people and you go like oh i really like this person and you start acting like them and then you you kind of it's like you try out different ways of yourself until you really find yourself and and that's why like being derivative as long as it's 
not literally carbon copying is I think it's I think is I kind of look up to it. I think it's really important that we don't, you know, shit on people for doing something a little bit similar at the beginning because you you it's have you to. It's how you grow. It's how you learn what's not real. And I think that sometimes we even start making something and and I'm just like, you know, this doesn't, this feels not authentic to me. And no. we just change it a little and we figure out a way to make it feel authentic. And I think we're just, we're just very, we're very, uh, I think, way more aware of what we actually yeah. are better at yeah. and do. And, and in, I think that was, that was, that really came out in, in this song. I think in terms of like one of the approaches to writing this that is, like people always, I feel like, you know, you, you make music and have for your whole life too. You know, people always want to know like, what comes first? Like the, the lyrics for you or the <laughs> music? You always you? Know Everybody that. asks that. And I, I always say that it's always different. But in the case of the Bond song, it was like 100% melody first because I just, I was like, we could say the coolest thing in the world. And if it isn't like a, like a Bond melody that you just like need I was like, it's not going to be effective. So it was all like, I don't, I rarely do this, but that song, I sat at a piano to come up with all of the melodies. It was yeah. all like great melody lines played as keys. And then, you know, maybe opt like modulating the melody a little bit, depending on if Billy was like, well, there should be an extra syllable in that line. But it was all very like melody first. And then it was kind of like, okay, that's the chorus melody what can we say that includes the hook of the song and just feels great to sing out that way so it was such a great like um maze challenge it was a good writing uh exercise exercise well let yeah. me let, let me bring in someone who knows a thing or two about <laughs> film music um a multiple academy award winner multiple grammy award winner one of the most lauded film composers of our time on zimmer hello there <laughs> Hans. Hi, Hans. Hey, we it's miss you. So nice. I, well, I miss you too. This this lockdown situation is really very antisocial. <laughs> I, I was I was hoping that I would get to see you all the time this year. That I was know. My oh, I know. We 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 had plans. And all <laughs> plans were good in in many many ways. But um, yeah. um So Hans, let me let, let yeah. me let me ask yeah, go you. On. If, if, if I understand the process correctly, right. usually the composer is hired and then, speaking of the Bond franchise, the composer's hired and then the artist and the title song is, is figured out um, after that. And it seems like if I understand this correctly, the process was a little flipped. Well, I, everything was a little flipped. The, first of all, I thought I never would do a Bond movie, even though I was very good friends with Barbara Broccoli. Um, but we were, we just, we were just always chatting. And my friend Leah Bollock said uh, to me, there is this, there's a little song lying around, make sure it doesn't get lost. And because, you know, like everybody was, everybody who could write a song was sending a song. And, and I just listened to Billy and Phineas and I just, I just, I just went, uh, I, I became very obnoxious and very German and went, this is it. You, you don't understand. If you don't understand that this is it, there's only one flaw with it. They haven't seen the movie. Get them on a plane now. And I think that, 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 was, that was my involvement. That was my involvement. Well, um, for, for you, for, for you as, as, as a composer, what does, what does a Bond title song have to have? Are there essential elements? I think, I think, I think this one was particular in so far that it, it had to have simplicity and heart and, and, and be really elegant. And I thought that's what this one was. The, the other thing that I thought was fantastic about it was that it was so stripped down that it was, you can't compete with Dame Shirley Bassey, so don't even try. You know, um, I think I think we all love the the Paul McCartney um, "Live and Let Let Die." You know, so oh, good. Um, we love all that, but but that's not what they do, and that's not what I do. So, so, so I think ultimately, what made it what made it special is by keeping it authentic, by by. Uh, 
by fighting for its authenticity, which, which you know, I, it sounds like I had, to, I had much of a fight on my hands. I had no fight on my hands. I had everybody just going, yes, they're great. That's it. Let's do it. You know, let's buy them the plane ticket. Yeah. So, so, so speaking of the plane ticket, um, Billy, Phineas, you know, I know you, you, you went to London. You had the opportunity to collaborate with Hans and, and the orchestra. Um, and, and I'm not aware, have you guys worked with an orchestra previously? No. Not, not, not this way. I, I'd grown up on the films that Hans had scored. And, you know, to me, it was like uh, part of the reason we didn't even attempt to do yeah. any string arrangement on the Bond song prior to Hans was I was like, it, the string arrangement for this has to be amazing. And I... I would just be lying if I said I had all this experience with strings. I just don't. So, or, or you know, orchestral like so strings is a, a is putting it too simply. But um, you know, to me, like, oh my god, it was such a a thrill to to get to just hang out with Hans and then to work on this song. And we the strings were recorded or the orchestra was recorded at Air Studios in London. And like, there's footage of that day, and Billy and I are just grinning like the whole day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, they were happy. Yeah. 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 Well, well. Also, Billy. Um. You, you know, obviously, doing that kind of recording for a major motion picture, there are a lot of cooks in that kitchen, so to speak. How much? How much input did you have in the process? I don't even remember. <laughs> Can I answer that? Go for Can it. I that? No, it's, it's simple. There was like there, there, there's like a, a point where I'd gone way over the top with something, um, and you just turned around and you just said, "I don't like it." <laughs> and, and, and 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 I thought that was the clearest, most honest, and perfect thing to say. I don't like it because uh, how can you argue with that? And you have to think, and you know you're not doing as well as you could be doing. So thank you, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I, th I mean, I think that's, that's how the sessions were running, that there wasn't anybody there who, it, it, it never felt, did it, I, to me, it never felt corporate, right? It always no, felt, no, but that was because you, I think the reason it never felt corporate was because of how great you, you know, you were so kind to us and like so much more generous than I thought we necessarily deserved um, <laughs> well, from you. and. that. And well, I think I think mainly because we're we're noobs and you've <laughs> won many Academy Awards. But um, you oh, were but, so kind, but, and then your your but, partner but, Stephen Lipson, who also worked with us, was really yeah. kind too. Well, St uh, Stephen uh, Stephen's recorded a few outstanding lead vocals in his past. I mean, he has yes. uh, you know Grace Jones and Annie Lennox, and you name it, and all the uh, yeah. whatever. Uh, but, but 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 you know the other the other part which I thought was really important is the Johnny Marr part. Johnny Marr was awesome. I asked you about the guitar, the guitar sound. So why, tell, me, tell me why that was important. Well, it was so really simple. I, Barbara asked me if I would come on board and I, I wasn't sure, um, out of all sorts of reasons. So I phoned Johnny and I said, I have two questions for you. Um, there is like one guitar part in the world that's worth playing and it's not yours. And the other question is, do you think I should do the Bond movie? And he goes, yes to both of those questions. <laughs> right? So he says, if I can have the job to play that, um, yes, you can do the movie. So, so, so that was a really good beginning. So I, ha you know, I, had, I, I had that to start off with because it, re it really is true. That, um, and the way Jolly plays, it's, it's like, you, you, have to, you have to be naturally born cool, right? And that might not necessarily be a kid from, uh, you know, an old man from Frankfurt. Um, but, you know, he, he can do that. He can pull that off. And then it was great getting Phineas and Billy and Johnny together. He was so nice. When, but, but, you know, and, and something, something happened, which I, I don't know. It's, I, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sense of communication that... A, a, appeared in the song that didn't take away or didn't usurp what um, Billy and Phineas was doing, but f felt like the same, uh, felt of the, uh, you know, of, um, 
of the same sort of style and 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 aesthetic as, as they were looking. Oh, absolutely. Well, well let I me think, go ahead, Finn. I was just going to say that you know I think Billy and I make all this music under uh, usual circumstances, just like alone in our room. And I I thought I thought for the Bond song, you know. If someone had told me, you know, you should lay some guitar down, I would be trying to mimic Johnny Marr. And if someone said, you should work out an orchestral arrangement, I'd be trying to mimic Hans' uh, orchestrations. And I think, like, the fact that we were just so privileged and, you know, Johnny played the guitar on this song and Hans did the orchestral arrangement, it was just such a blessing. And, you know, one of the, it's like, to me, when I put that song on in the car, I just, I can't, it feels very surreal that that I was involved in any way because it's just so cool that these people that we've looked up to for so long are involved. But don't you, but don't you feel, I mean, like, this is how I feel. It was just a really great moment in history. It was a great moment. You got to write a Bond song. We all got to uh, get together. We got to do it. We had all the right ingredients. Um, we we had this, all the right point of view. And, and in a peculiar way, it, it felt really naturally and it was so fun to, to, to go and do this was the song that had to be done for this film and it was all of our first time doing a bond song that was really exciting i'm so glad it was your first and johnny's first and Absolutely. our first that was really fun well let me let me let me let, let, let's put the button on the on the bond discussion hans i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of give you the last word um obviously you've worked with all manner of artists musicians directors name it what makes Billy and Phineas good collaborators? Um, that, that, that they're very good. It's as simple as that. If you work <laughs> with people who are really good and who are willing to just go in, in the gentlest of way, um, no, it, would be, it might be a better idea if we tried this. And, and it usually, you know, I, I, I hate being the smartest guy in the room. I love having them in the room because they're the smartest guys in the room. <laughs> Simple as that. And, 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 they're, and, they're, and they're, they're delighted to be around. Yeah. I mean, well, what this conversation started from, you know, that place of, yes, we want to hang. We want to do things. We, we, you know, that, that's, uh, we, you haven't heard the end, the, the last of us. Let, let me put it that way. Well, I we hope look, so. We, we look forward to that for okay. sure. Billy, Phineas, I only have one more question for you. Um, okay. And, and it's, you know, it's been about six months or so, maybe a little bit longer, since that remarkable evening at the Grammy Awards. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm wondering now with a little time and perspective, what that recognition meant to the both of you? Um, uh, it... <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing. I was very embarrassed. It was a, uh, um, I mean, like that was probably like one of the best nights of my life. And, you know, I, I, I sobbed and sobbed tears of joy. We all did afterwards and we couldn't believe it. And I, I still can't believe it, but you know, to be honest with you, it's a, uh, it's very weird to be sitting in a room. Listen, I love the Grammys so much, but to be sitting in a room full of your idols and have them all low key resent you was very upsetting for me. <laughs> and to then have the, those people's entire fandoms that I've been a part of for years hate me. That was super weird. Still super weird. Um, but it, I mean, it's the kind of thing you don't, you don't, I don't know who can feel like they deserve. Being nominated for a Grammy is the coolest. It's because so cool. I, I could have lost every single one. I would have been so happy because I was nominated. Being, it's really being nominated. You're in a peer group with all your, your, your contemporaries or your, you know, superiors, depending on how you feel about them. And, uh, and you just feel like you can't believe you're in this club. And then when you win, you're like, but I don't feel, I don't feel better than any of no. these people, even though they didn't win this award and I did. So it's, 
it's it's a little it's 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 conflicting because then you know you, you you're just it was weird it was pretty weird but it was it was amazing and i'm so grateful and i was so happy and you know that's i don't know it was really amazing well, well we once in a lifetime we love listening to to all the new music i know there's a new album in the works can't wait can't wait to hear that. We'll do another program all about that. Um, Hans Zimmer, Phineas, Billie Eilish, thank you all so much for taking the time today. Thank you for having us. You. You're such a great interviewer. Thanks for having us. And thank we you. miss you a lot, um, Hans, as well. We miss, we miss you, you, Hans. I really miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed virus free. <laughs> we'll go surfing with you. All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Thank you.